Yo, Elliot, I have a really kind and sweet woman. I already call her wife, even though we're not married yet. I'm 24 and she's 22. The thing is, she's falling for this world's propaganda and she wants to work and earn money after college. I want her to stay home with me and uh, bear children. We are talking about kids and plan to have them in three years after we sort out our situation with place to live, finish school and get stable. I still have to finish college and I'm not earning money at the moment. I don't want her to work for someone else. My wife will not have a boss like you said, I'm her boss. I've seen a lot of ugly minded people at places where I had worked, so disrespectful and too sexually suggestive, both men and women. Last place I worked, I told everyone I have a wife and they asked about it and they were people who were saying things like, oh, that won't last long. You'll get bored of each other. You'll like some other woman instead. She's going to uh, like someone else as well. And when one female colleague, colleague came around, people were like, look at her. She's pretty. And I'm like, my wife is pretty too. <laughs> the point is, she's going to have someone at work who is like this. Bad people who want to see you fail. Maybe because they failed. I don't know. I don't want to be a tyrant. I want to educate her and explain what's the best for our relationship. Can you suggest any material or explain how to educate your wives uh, to want to be mothers and to have a job as a mother while the man provides. She reads books that are self-development de related, but what people don't understand, most of those books are written by men and women try to emulate that what they learn. I love that she's educated, don't get me wrong, but things, some things can't work. We have a really good relationship. We never argue. We don't have sex. We haven't had sex for a year when we got together. And we are currently doing a sex fast because I want to minimize entertainment of that kind before we go about having babies. We were talking about a lot of stuff that I learned from you and I know she'll follow my lead. She said it herself that she will adapt to my wishes and she wants to be my wife. I just don't want to be tyrannical and she needs to be satisfied in order for us to have a good family. One more thing. How do you deal with other men looking at your wife, maybe in public or social settings? I was kind of getting pissed about it before. Uh, but as the time goes on, it bothers me less and less. But I understand that men can't control themselves and it's just looking. What do you think about all this? So I appreciate your question, dude. So what I did was I reviewed your question earlier and instead of giving you my opinion, because I think it's pretty clear what my opinion is on these particular topics, what I wanted to do is share with you some material. You asked for some material. I'm gonna share with you some books and materials that I think are going to be very helpful to you. So give me a moment here and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And so here I am, I'm on Amazon. And so the, this author here, let me flip around here. This author here, her name's Susan Venker. I heard her, Colleen and I both heard her speak at the 22 convention uh, earlier this, this fall. And I really liked what she had to say. She's a really smart woman and she has authored a lot of books uh, regarding what it is that you're asking. So let me move down to the ones that I think are very good. The two income trap, why parents are choosing to stay at home. In fact, I have it over here. The two income track. For decades, feminists have belabored the idea that work should be at the center of a woman's life and that motherhood could get, wouldn't get in the way of this goal if society would simply cooperate. If husbands performed half the housework and childcare, if the government would invest in universal daycare and family leave and its employees would allow parents to leave the office at 5 p.m., women could achieve the balance they so desperately seek. First of all, and I agree with this woman, she's right, but this is what feminists believe. And it's almost like this whole thing about uh, you know leaving the office at 5 p.m., universal daycare. It's so funny that in this world where you know equality is preached, right? Women want to be equal to men. They can't be equal to men without having uh, cheats, right? Like cheat codes, right? Like, well, we'll be equal to you when the government gives us money. We'll be equal to you when the job lets us go home at 5 p.m., right? We'll be equal to you in sports if we make the basketball hoop a little bit lower and make the ball a little bit smaller. It's, it's silly. It doesn't make any sense and it defies nature and it defies what is good for man and woman. Anyway, she goes on to say, 
In the two income track, bestseller author and Fox News contributor Susan Banker claims that the two income family is a trap. It encourages Americans to think about family solely in terms of economics, when in fact breadwinning is only part of the equation. The burnout that results from not having someone home to do everything mothers have historically done is huge. Not only do children lose out, marriages become stressed to the breaking point, husbands and wives become locked in the battle over who's going to do what on the home front. When that happens, many women view this as a marital problem when in fact the issue is time. There just isn't enough. The battles between husbands and wives aren't always waged over actual chores and the inequity of handling them. The battle's over time, right? So anyway, that's one book that I would highly recommend uh, looking into. Let's see. It says look inside. It's not letting me look inside. This is the author, and she's got a couple other books, one of the, which is uh, Seven Myths of Working Mothers, Why Children and Most Careers Just Don't miss, Mix. Dispelling our most cherished myths about working mothers, Susan Venku argues that women can, can't be successful in the workplace and at home simultaneously. Go figure. They can achieve the balance so that they desperately seek only by planning their careers around motherhood rather than planning motherhood around their careers. Even that's a little bit too much for me. Next book I'd, re I'd recommend is uh, The anti Meyer Exposed, Rescuing the Culture from Toxic Femininity. Not exactly on the topic of working moms, but it exposes the weakness and inherent evil of feminism, right? And so you can go ahead and read that. I'm not going to spend any more time on it. And finally, a book written by a man, a man who's written a lot of books that I like and refer to, Stephen Arneo, The Oracle, The Queen, The Princess, and The Whore. And th what this book is, is essentially, in a lot of ways, right? In a lot of ways, but it's not exactly. King, warrior, magician, lover, but for women, right? So you got the queen, you got the princess, you got the whore, you got the oracle. And what he sort of asserts is, of course, you know, with a man, his executive function, the top of the deal is his king, right? We've been talking about that. But for a woman, in fact, it's the oracle, which is the magician quality within a woman, right? Because, first of all, a woman can't become a queen until she marries a king. There's no queen without a king, right? So the executive, that aspect of it is only available to married women. You don't become a queen without a king, right? Like, if, you, if, a, if a man marries the queen he doesn't become the king. He becomes the queen's wife, right? The queen became the queen because maybe her husband died. Um, but if a woman marries a king, she becomes a queen, right? I think, uh, I don't remember who was talking about this once. But there's no queen without a, without a princess, without a, a husband. The princess, so actually we're going backwards, so they want, you know, there's the whore, there's a princess, there's a queen and the oracle. The whore is, you know, the sexual, that's like the lover within the man, right? It's like that, that want for chaos, uh, because of its sensual gratification. Then there's a princess, right? Which is sort of like the, uh, sort of like the warrior, but the polar opposite, because men and women are polar opposites, right? What does the warrior do? He saves the princess, right? So the opposite of the warrior is a princess. And then finally, the oracle is the opposite of the magician. And the oracle is the woman's highest value. It's her highest expression because it's found in her reaching deep, or tapping into her intuitive powers, her mystical powers, in order to serve her husband, not because she has to serve him out of any obligation, but because that's the type of woman that realizes when I make my husband great, my life becomes great. And so that would be a really good book to, I would recommend also. The Oracle examines what it means to be a woman in the modern world and explores the four types of women, oracles, queens, princesses, and whores. Each woman is, how each woman is, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But anyway, very good book for women to read, for your woman to read, if you want her to be a, a good wife. So that's it. I thought that was cool. We did a little bit of field trip. I don't do that very often, but let me get rid of these screens. But I wanted to share a couple books that I thought would be very helpful to you so go check those out susan vanker was is she you, you can see her youtube videos or you can see her talk at 2102 convention probably on youtube here pretty soon um and then she also has a book that i just i've only read one of her books and it's called and it's uh the um it's about feminism let me see if i find it it's the flip side of feminism and i just bought that book recently I haven't read it yet 
the flip side of feminism, and I bought it because I plan on giving it to my daughters at some point, uh, what conservative women know and men can't say. So anyway, so there you have it, my bro. Those are, um, those are books that I would suggest you, sh you read yourself. You always want to do that, right? You don't want to just start recommending books or giving books to people who haven't read yourself. You want to make sure that you're aligned with the values that are in the book um, so, so that she can see from your perspective, right? Because feminism and gynocentrism is so per, per, uh, ever-present, omnipresent. It's everywhere. It's pervasive. That's the word I was looking for. Um, and it's almost impossible for a woman to do anything or, or to think or behave in any other way because it's in the TV, it's in the movies, it's in the media, it's in the music, it's everywhere, it's everywhere. We, uh, our entire, uh, all of the institutions of our society have been subverted, ideological subversion, right? I'm going to talk a lot about this in my new book, but uh, the long march to the institutions was the plan of Antonio Gramsci, who's one of the founders of cultural Marxism, that had its design to destroy the, destroy the West by destroying the culture. And they needed feminism in order to destroy the culture. Uh, both um, Stalin understood, and it was further propounded by Wilhelm Reich, that the only way to uh, corrupt that first of all, the way to corrupt the society is to corrupt the woman. That's why Satan came to Eve. The way, the way to corrupt the man is through the woman. If you corrupt the woman, the man falls, right? This is why men are falling right now. Men are, we're, we're, we're a mess as men. This is why my objective here is to make men strong again, but I can't do it without addressing women, right? If women fall, men follow. So they understood that if you're gonna corrupt the morals of the society, you had to corrupt the morals of the woman. And the way you corrupt the morals of the woman is by turning her against, well, number, actually, Wilhelm Reich was explicit in that the way you corrupt the, cor the um, morals of a woman is by removing the authority of the father, and the way you remove the authority of the father is through promiscuity. This is what he asserted. He said when, when women start getting involved with promiscuous sex, right, fornication, the respect for the father immediately uh, wanes and dwindles. So he understood that in order to corrupt the, corrupt the woman, you had to make her a slut. And Stalin understood that if you, under, if you wanted to destroy a society, you had to corrupt the woman. So they always, Satan always attacks the women first. And so we, women are, I mean, the whole society is under attack, but women are the, are the crux of this attack. And it's not easy to find supportive material that, that proposes that it's better not to be a feminist, right? It's, like I said, it's so pervasive. So these are, these are books that you're probably not going to hear about or get recommended in many, too many other places because even men have fallen for the gynocentric trap. We're all, we've all fallen for this. Just like Adam, he fell, for, he fell for it because his wife fell for it, right? And so it's up to us to reverse that trend. And I think these books will help you, bro. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.